One of the most interesting stories of friendship and its eventual demise is that of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and Harry Houdini. Their short-lived friendship had its ups and downs, but it was eventually destroyed by one thing, the paranormal. Both of these men had achieved fame in their own right. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, an Englishman, had created one of the most lasting characters in literature, Sherlock Holmes, in the late 1880s, and had also written other famous stories such as The Lost World. Houdini, originally from Hungary, was, by the beginning of the 1920s, a world-renowned magician and escape artist, whose illusions and stunts baffled and amazed audiences the world over. These two great men eventually met sometime in 1920, and began their friendship. But they differed on one important topic. In the same year that he had first created Sherlock Holmes, 1887, Doyle became interested in spiritualism. At first, he was skeptical, but after visiting a reportedly haunted house, he heard some noises inside, and when he learned that a young child was buried in the garden of the property, he was convinced that ghosts were real and that they could be contacted. He attended various seances and spiritualist gatherings and demonstrations. His belief was further solidified when he believed he had contacted his own son, who had died in World War I, from beyond the grave. Even into the 1920s, Doyle retained these beliefs, and he had even written a number of books about paranormal subjects. Many science-minded people at that time must have found it ironic that the man who had created Sherlock Holmes, a character with an acute understanding of logic which he used to solve mysteries, could believe in such illogical phenomena. One of those people was Harry Houdini. While Houdini is mostly known for his incredible stunts, such as escaping from handcuffs, escaping from a straitjacket while suspended upside down, and his famous Chinese water torture cell act, he also had another hobby that he was very passionate about, debunking spiritual mediums and psychics. You see, when he was just starting his career as an illusionist, Houdini had acted as a medium and a psychic, and he understood that it was all an act. He himself had tricked people into believing that they could contact their dead loved ones through him, and he felt immense guilt for doing something he felt was very cruel, so he wanted to make good. Doyle and Houdini often tried persuading the other into sharing his beliefs concerning spiritualism. Houdini often disguised himself when meeting with mediums or psychics, then proceeded to debunk them. Doyle didn't budge in his convictions, but he wasn't exactly offended at first. He believed that Houdini was getting rid of the frauds within the spiritualist movement. 1922 would prove to be a climactic year in their short-lived friendship. Both had already discussed and disagreed with each other's beliefs, and both had tried to demonstrate to the other that they were mistaken. When Doyle came to America to lecture on spiritualism in 1922, Houdini invited him to attend the annual meeting of the Society of American Magicians. Doyle decided to make a move, to give a reasonable doubt to all these magicians that perhaps they were wrong. Using a film projector, Doyle displayed an incredible scene. Two dinosaurs fighting each other in a violent struggle. The audience was in shock. They knew, logically, that what they were seeing couldn't be real, but there it was, right in front of their eyes. What this was, in reality, was a stop-motion test clip made during the production of the 1925 film The Lost World, which was based on Doyle's 1912 novel. Even though this crude animation is what the audience saw, you have to remember that stop-motion was at the very earliest stages of development at this point, so nothing like it had really been seen before by the general public. Doyle didn't explain the origin of the footage, but let the images sink in. He wanted to prove to them that just because something seemed incredible or even impossible, that doesn't necessarily mean it can't happen. Of course, it's a bit ironic that Doyle himself knowingly used an illusion to try and persuade them. That same year, Doyle's wife Jean, who was a self-professed medium, tried to contact Houdini's beloved mother who had died nine years earlier. But even though he had desperately wanted to believe that he was talking to his mother again, it didn't work. Through her contact with Houdini's mother, she had produced a long message in perfect English that she claimed Houdini's mother's spirit had written through her. Houdini disregarded this as proof, saying that his mother could barely speak, no less write, English that well. Houdini wasn't averse to the idea that ghosts could be contacted, but he was never convinced that it was possible. Doyle publicly wrote that Jean had contacted Houdini's mother, and while Houdini disagreed, he didn't say anything publicly. However, Houdini did say publicly afterward that he had never seen proof of any true power in a psychic medium. Although indirect, it hurt Jean's feelings, and Doyle was offended by this comment. In 1924, 
Houdini famously debunked the medium Mina Crandon. Houdini was on a panel of judges selected by the Scientific American magazine, which had put up a large sum of money for anyone who could convince the panel that they possessed real psychic powers. Houdini was the only judge who was not convinced, then proceeded to demonstrate how she performed the illusion. He made her do it again wearing a special box which prevented her from moving her foot, which Houdini said was what she was using to ring a bell and convince everyone that a spirit was in fact ringing it. She wasn't able to do it again. Crandon's family alleged that Houdini tampered with the procedure just so he couldn't be proven wrong. Doyle was a firm believer that Crandon's powers were genuine. Perhaps he believed that Houdini had sabotaged the demonstration because of his stubbornness to believe. He was surely still sore about Houdini not recognizing his wife's psychic powers. But whatever the reason, their friendship was now over. So that was the story of two great, influential men whose relationship deteriorated because of a mutual frustration over the other's belief in the paranormal. I would say that this was a strange reason for such a feud, but I guess that's what happens when you have two prideful and stubborn men who are unwilling to compromise. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. This story is relatively well known, but not super famous, so hopefully you learned something new. If you like this video, I've got plenty more of them on my channel, so please consider subscribing. Well, that's all for now all you Sheiks and Gals out there, but stay tuned for more Tales from the Jazz Age.